In this video, I'm going to go through the create record Soho CRM task. The syntax is like this, soho.crm.create module name. You then give it a map with the field values and you specify whether you want it to perform duplicate check or not. So an example from Zoho is here, creating the map using the syntax with the curly braces. And then you just go zoho.crm.create leads lead info. Let's give that a whirl. If I create a new custom function, associate it, maybe I'll do contacts instead of leads. Create new contact. And we'll do contact data. We'll make a new map. And we'll do contact data dot put first name testing new contact should probably check what my mandatory fields are within the contacts module. Just last name, perfect. But I could put in, just for the hell of it, put in department. And then we'll see what happens if we add it. To info, so we can see what happens. There you go, we've got a new contact record in there. We look at that. You can see it's got the first name and last name that we specified, and the department works like a charm. Now let's talk about, as I mentioned in the previous video, that if you have a custom module and you want to create a new custom module, I've actually got a custom function that does that already, so let's take a squeeze at that. The idea here is that when a new contact is created, that it will automatically create a new record in this custom module HC82s. It gets the data from the contacts module using get record by ID. It finds the contact name. You'll notice that I'm using if null here. If null checks whether that particular value, in this case the first name, is empty. If it's empty then it will initially appear as null, which we don't really want. So we're saying if it's null, then instead use an empty string like that. And then it's adding it to the last name. After that, it creates a new map, sets the custom module one name to contact name. And you'll recall from the last video that we have to do it like this, custom module one name, rather than hc82 name, which is what appears in the user interface. And then we follow the same process for inserting the record. You'd have to do a similar thing if you were creating a new potential. In this case, I have renamed potentials to projects. I don't do project name, I do potential name. You have to 
the system fields. And you can tell what a system field is by going to set up modules. If you go into leads, for example, you'll be able to see because the system fields they have <clears throat> they either have no way to rename them yep no edit properties for example or sorry this is what I mean they you can't rename them whereas custom fields you can rename them so the custom fields you can see have red text there but the system fields are in black text anytime you have a system field you have to use the underlying name if I renamed leads to prospects I'd still have to do lead source rather than prospect source and lead status rather than prospect status that can trip you up when you have renamed modules but the basic message is that you need to use the underlying system ID for the module and for the name if you want help figuring that out the easiest way I've found is to actually print out the full record and then you'll be able to see what the field name should be if I do this for example and I give it a contact I might give it a, a potential you'll see here that it has potential name here all of the original field names are here and that can help you when you're trying to get data or update an existing record or create a new record you need to know what the fields are actually called and this allows you to do that hope that helps